has your website ever looked like this? Or this? Or this? Or this? Or this? Or this? Or this? If so, that is totally okay. I've designed many of these sites myself, and that's simply because I just didn't know what I was doing at the time. Hey everyone, I'm Chris. I'm a senior front-end engineer based out of New York City, and today I wanted to help other developers start bringing their design skills up to speed. Now, developers get a notoriously bad rep for their design skills, but I promise you that does not have to be the case. With just a few simple skills in our toolbox, we can immediately begin making impact on bad designs. And these are going to be practical, logical steps which we can apply to pretty much any bad design out there. So without further ado, these are five techniques you can start using to improve all of your website designs. So the first way we can begin improving our websites is by reducing our text width. If we look over here at our first example, we have the Valve Developer Community website, and as you can see, not that great looking but we can make it look better by reducing the width of our text right here. So think about how we read text as humans. We obviously go from the left, we go to the right, and then we go down to the next line. If things are too long, like they are down here, we go all the way to the end of our line. You'll see my head moved a little bit to find the end. Then I have to move my head back to find the beginning of the next. That is annoying for my brain, for my eyes, and for my head. I don't want to have to do that. I want to be able to read this like a book, so just my eyes are moving and then I can easily find the next line. If your text is easy and enjoyable to read, I promise you in the end, your design is going to look good by default. It's funny, the more logical a design is, the better it is going to look, I promise you that. So if text is too long, we want to shorten it, but if text is too short, then we don't consume enough content. Let's say this paragraph right here has a max width of 300 pixels, and I'm reading the first line. Network bandwidth is limited, so the server can't. Then I have to move to the next line. Send a new update pack to all clients for every. I'm just not consuming enough content per line. My eyes can easily move more distance, and that is annoying as well. So we want to find the sweet spot in regards to our text length so that our eyes don't have to move much, but our head doesn't have to move either. And by doing that, our design by default is going to look good. So let's see this in action. If I want to apply this to this design right here, I'm going to select the main content container, which is this div with an ID of content. If I apply a max width of 600 pixels to this content, this is already looking much better and much easier to read because it looks more like a book. If I want to further improve this design, I can set our margin equal to zero auto, and that's just going to center things. Also means I don't have to turn my head slightly to begin reading stuff. I can just see the content directly in the center. That's not a huge deal, but the content width definitely is. So a few rules of thumb here are, if you have a text size of 12 to 14 pixels, like we do right here, this paragraph font is currently 12 pixels, then you want to use around a max width of 600 pixels. If we were to increase the size to 16 pixels, which is a default for most paragraph text, we would want to use a size of 670 pixels. And then if we have something larger, let's say 18 or 20 point size text, then we would want to use a max width of 700 pixels, maybe a little larger. But those are some great standards to start with in case you're wondering what I can do to begin making my text look better. So that is going to be step number one to improving a site design is reducing your text width. The second is going to be starting off with a 16 point font for pretty much all of your text. So over here, we have a font size of 12 pixels. You can see it right there with the little white box that says font 12.8 pixels. And that's okay. This looks legible to me because I am super zoomed in for this tutorial. But for a lot of you guys visiting a site, it will be zoomed out hard to read simply because it's just small. So instead of using a font size of 16 pixels, I really recommend starting off with a font size of 16. That is the base standard for pretty much any paragraph text. And then you can size up or down depending on your needs for your project. So if I were to change all of our paragraph font size right here to 16 pixels, we're going to get something that looks like this. Now this is easier to read as in, it's not as small. I don't really have to focus in on the text, but it does look worse. Why is that? Well, when we affect the font size here, we also need to take into consideration line height, which is the space in between our sentences, and also the space in between our paragraphs. Since we just changed the font size and not those other two variables, things just don't look good because we don't have enough breathing room between our sentences or paragraphs. So if we want to take care of that real quick, I recommend 
changing your line height to be about 1.25 or 1.5 times the size of your font size. So we take 16 times it by 1.25, we get 20. We change our line height right here to 20 pixels and that is a little more breathing room. Maybe we want a little more, we can increase this by 1, 2, 3, 4, that would be 1.5 times the size. And I think that breathing room right there between our sentences is good. But we do have the issue with our paragraph spacing right here. It's hard to differentiate which paragraph is which because the space in between them is so little. So we want to do the same thing for our margin on the top and bottom. If we change our margin on top and bottom to 1.5 times the size of our font size, we are going to be able to differentiate between our paragraphs much better as you can see. So with those simple changes right there, things are looking way better. And if I open up a new tab with the old changes, let's go between the two. Which one would you rather read? I'm pretty darn sure I would want to read the first one just because it's so much more legible. I can take in all the content easier and I'm not squinting to see the small text over here or moving my head at all. Now for this tip, I mentioned that we start off with a 16 point font for pretty much everything. And the next example I want to show is going to be the Jenkins documentation. So when we read this content on the right hand side, we have this really large headline over here and it just looks kind of silly in relation to the paragraph text. Let's take into account our rule starting off with 16 point text. So I'm going to change our H1 right here to have a font size of 16 pixels. And I want to do the same thing for H2 tags, so I'll say our font size for those will be 16 pixels as well. Now, honestly, I don't think this looks much worse or much better. But we start off with 16 because that is the base size. And then we want to begin incrementing or decrementing by 2 pixels in either direction. So that we start to get some differentiation between the headline and the paragraph text. So, I know this is a headline, I know I definitely want some differentiation there. I'm going to start increasing this by two pixels. I'm going to go up to 18. Can I easily differentiate between the headline and our paragraph text right here at first glance? I think so, but I'm not completely sure. And if you're not completely sure, I recommend bumping it up by two more pixels. Now, can I easily differentiate between this and the text right here? I am much more sure than I was before, but maybe I want this headline to just be really easy to jump to when I first look at it. Let's go up by two. I think that is good right there at 22 pixels. You could probably even go up to 24 if you want. So a range of 20 to 24 is probably good here. But you kind of get the idea. We don't want to go too large like we had before because it just looks silly. It's completely out there and our focus is lost. But if we stick by increasing things by two pixels up or down, we are going to get something that looks much more in line. And this works for pretty much every headline. We we'll change this headline right here to have a font size of 24 pixels like above or maybe that was 22, I don't know what I actually set it to, things just look so much better. Now, this applies not just to headlines and contents, but also to things like labels. So this label represents this group of items on the left. If I were to take it, set its font size equal to 16 pixels, that's already looking better than it was before, and we're going to get to this later, but let's say I want to decrease the sizes. I'm going to go down by two. If we just compare this to what we had before, let's look open up a new tab and go between the two. In regards to our headlines, which one would you prefer? Most likely you're going to prefer this one and when we begin implementing everything together, I promise you it will be the ones with the smaller or slightly bigger sizes because we don't want to go overboard or too far in either direction. But that is going to be step number two in regards to improving your design is by starting off with a 16 point font and increasing by two pixels in either direction. You're going to start getting some really good looking designs in regards to your fonts, especially when you start implementing that. So the next tip I have for you is to shade your paragraphs. Now this is more of a taste almost, but I really think it helps with differentiating between what text is a headline and what text is a paragraph. So we'll stick on the Jenkins documentation right here. When we look at this, Obviously we know this is our headline and this is our paragraph text because this is bold and big and this is a normal font weight and small. But if we want this to be even easier in regards to how our brain registers this, we can begin to change the shade of our paragraph text by lightening it. So we want to make this a very slight gray in relation to our dark headline up above. Now if you're having trouble figuring out what kind of gray to use, 
I recommend just going over to tailwindcss.com slash docs slash customizing dash colors. They have some really great color palettes in which we can grab specific hex codes and begin applying them to our designs. So let's say our headlines right here are using a hex code of 020617. That is the darkest shade of slate, which is also gray. We want to use a lighter shade of this for our paragraph text to immediately begin differentiating between the two. I always recommend starting off with a 600 shade from Tailwind because I found that is the most legible. It's not too light, it's not too dark, and there's definitely differentiation between this color and this one right here. So if we begin applying this to the Jenkins website, I want to make all of our paragraph text that color of the 600 shade slate. So I'll select all of our paragraph tags, add in that color, paste it on in, and now when we read our paragraph text right here, we can easily, more easily, differentiate between the paragraphs and the actual headlines. And the more we do stuff like this and where it's easier to differentiate or just read this text in general, the better it's going to look. So this is already looking better than what we have over here. And we're just going to keep chipping away at this till it looks really great. But these are some of the first steps that you want to take. And this also applies to dark themed websites. You can see the Val site's already using it over here. They have a lighter shade of gray for their paragraph text in comparison to their headline text. So even the kind of janky looking Valve website is making use of this one good design skill. So I highly recommend shading your paragraphs to make them easier to differentiate between your headlines and make it easier on your brain to read. So the fourth tip I have for you guys is to separate with white space and not borders. So if we go back to our Jenkins site over here, we have this border on the left hand side of our content separating our menu on the left from the content on the right. What is the point of this border? Well, you might think to yourself to separate the content and the menu. But if we were to get rid of the border, would we be able to separate the two? Let's find out. I'm going to inspect the element in which the border is on. It's going to be right here. If I get rid of this, exit out of the console, can we tell what section is the content and what section is the menu? I think the answer is obvious. Of course we can. We know this is a menu because it is in a hierarchical format. It looks much different than what we have over here. And just by getting rid of that unneeded border, things just magically look much cleaner. Let's compare the two. Why is this border here? Really, it serves no purpose at all because we can get the same amount of purpose by adding adequate white space right here between our menu and our content. Since we have enough white space right here, that acts as the separator. Therefore, we don't need the border. It just clutters things up and we clean up our design as a result. Let's see another example of this. If I were to go to the PNPM website, we have the same issue over here. We have a border, but why is the border even there in the first place if it's pretty apparent that this list over here is separate from our content? I don't know why it's there, so let's get rid of it. I'm going to comment that out. And we can easily differentiate between the two. We know that this is a separate item from what we have over here. There's adequate white space between the two. Therefore, we don't need that border. It just creates clutter and this is going to look much cleaner as a result. A great website that does this correctly is Tailwind CSS. You can see they don't have borders in between their content or their menus. So if you ever need an example on a good design to use for all these tips, I highly recommend Tailwind CSS. So the fifth tip I have for you guys is to de-emphasize your labels. I see this issue happening so much within web design, it is absurd, so I think it is good that we cover it here. Now if we go back to the original Jenkins documentation, we have labels which represent groupings of menu items on the left hand side. Why is this label bigger than the text over here? If you can think of a good reason, please tell me, because I can't think of one. Our focus over here should be on these items, not the grouping label. As a result, we want to de-emphasize this label right here. And we can do that in a few ways. The top are by shrinking the font size, which we already did over here. And then we can further de-emphasize this by making this a lighter shade of gray. So we already shrunk the size over here and this, this size looks way better than it did over here because we don't want to focus on user handbook. We want to look for what content we actually want to jump to. So we de-emphasized over here or we can further de-emphasize this by choosing a lighter shade of gray, and I'm going to go to Tailwind for that. I'm going to use 500. I want something even lighter than what we use for our paragraph. And then I'm going to select all H5 elements, add in that lighter color, and that is much more de-emphasized compared to before. 
So now our focus is on items rather than the labels, but the labels are still helpful to us in regards to understanding what these groupings are. And there are going to be many more places in where you have a label which you think should be larger, but you really just want it smaller because the focus should be the content. So if you ever have something that introduces another piece of content and it might actually be a label, think about de-emphasizing it by shrinking it and reducing the shade of gray, and it's really going to make your designs look a lot better. So if we take everything that we learned and apply it to this Jenkins site, including reducing the width of our text right here, we're going to get something that looks so much better than what Jenkins had prior. So let's take care of that now. I'm going to shrink the width of this. Since we are using 16 point font for our text right here, I want our max width to be 670 pixels. And remember, if we want a little cheat on how to make this look even better with this shrunken width, what we can do is set our margin equal to zero auto and center that. And now this is just so much cleaner than what we had before. Let's compare the two just so you know I'm not messing with you right now. This is taking into account our five skills. And this is not taking into account those five skills. This is what was there prior. I think I know which one I would rather read. And is this one right here. Because we are making things easier on the eyes, easier on the brain, and the more logical we make a website, the better it is going to look. Thanks so much for watching everyone. If you would like to take this to the next level, then I recommend checking out this video right here. This is a CSS course that I made which will help transfer your designs from a design file over to an actual web page, and it uses the best methodology to do so in my opinion with Tailwind CSS. So be sure to check that out, otherwise I'll see you guys in the next one.